everyone, it's Desiree, and I am here with Spellbinders, and we are going to create a card using the Fun Stampers Journey Stamp of the Month for April of 2020. This is an absolutely gorgeous stamp set. I immediately fell in love with it and came up with many ideas for it, and you'll be able to see a few of them. So I loved the florals. I loved the way that they were penned. Um the the softness of each of those i loved the idea of the frame and the way that the sentiment itself was laid out and yes it will sit in that frame so what i decided to do was i grabbed my hem stitch rectangle set by spellbinders and when i first saw these florals i immediately wanted to create a wreath um but i didn't want it to be a circle i was looking for excuse me, looking for it to have that shape of the rectangle because I wanted the sentiment to be inside. Please know that I did keep the coloring in this video as well. I know a lot of you like to see that. Um, so this is on the longer side. So the rectangle I chose based on the images that I'm going to use the stamp with, I'm going to just trace lightly on the outside of that. I'm then going to use my Simon Says Fog ink. Now, I was going to first do this just with acrylic blocks, but what I was looking for um, when it came to this image, I wanted to stamp it multiple times. Um, and probably I stamp it about three times, actually. Because even though the fog, the fog ink is perfect, um, and I do use it often um, for no line coloring, because I'm going to be using my colored pencils for this picture, um, or the stamped image, but I did want the faintness of the ink. So you can see twice, I'm, I'm getting that done. Now, it will pull back, it, it will dry back, even though I'm stamping this twice it will do that but when you see in the image it does create a shadow um, for the image which is what I was looking for that was a lot of gap about that yeah so you can see I'm just coming around I wanted the two corners to have the larger of the floral and then I definitely wanted the sides to have the longer floral stem and then I just wanted that other corner piece to connect those two, to have, to have those in the other corner. So it's almost like this rectangle is being pulled in both directions, if that makes sense. Okay. So I'm going to be stamping the last image here. And again, I'm making sure that I'm also going over that drawn that that faint line that I outlined the rectangle in here I'm just placing where my sentiment will fall so just getting that ready I'm not going to stamp that yet because I wasn't quite sure what I was going to stamp that in actually so here I am going to use my Prismacolor pencils and I'm using a rosy beige and a chestnut for the florals and then I'm using the 30% warm gray and the 50% warm gray. So when it comes to um, the lighter shade of the warm grays, I'm actually using that to do the branches to go into the leaves for the leaves stem. Um, and just to be on top of where I stamped. I am not looking for this to be perfect. Um, because again, I'm okay. I want to see that shadow. Um, I definitely want to see the shadow of the ink coming from underneath the colored pencil. I'm using also this gray um, to help with that shading within those smaller leaves. I mean, these are very dainty and small stamped images. So I just, I just want to make sure that all of that is covered but not the big floral 
as you can see, because I definitely want that to have that no line colored look. Now for uh, this is where the chestnut and the rosy beige, the rosy beige is the lighter shade um, that's coming in. You can see I'm putting down my darker color first towards the base of the petal. And then I am coming in with my lighter shade coming off of that to help blend that out. I did not use any blender pencils, nor did I use any white to help blend these. I actually wanted the natural look of the colored pencil. Um, cause again, I'm on this, uh, I'm using Nina solar white. If I was on a Bristol or a watercolor paper or my Strathmore mixed media paper that I'm absolutely fond of, I would have come in, um, with the white because again, it, it's got a little bit of a tooth. Um, Nina solar white is not my first choice to, um, use for colored pencils. Um, yes, I'm actually getting something here, but I will be right back. Yeah. See, there I am. Um, I think I was reaching for my sharpener there. Um, it's just not my first choice for colored pencils. Again, that's just my personal preference. Um, I do like a, a cardstock or a paper that's got a good tooth that grabs onto that pigment. And you also have that texture at the same time. So again, it's, it's whatever everyone's used to. That's just something that I actually, you know, got used to. So you can see now I'm, I'm going in with the smaller flowers. And when it comes to the, the stems that come out of the flower, I'm actually using the darker chestnut. I'm only sticking with these four colors. Um, when it comes to the coloring of this image, I'm not introducing any other colors. You'll see when I stamp my image, um, I will stamp my image using the Simon Says Intense Black. One of the things that I like about the Simon Says Intense Black is yes, it, it is an, it is a strong black by all means. Um, but for me, it, it, it is also soft. Yes. I'm sharpening my pencil every time I go away. I just didn't want it right in front of the camera there guys. So sorry about that. Um, but it's not, I like the softness of it. I like the ease of it. Um, so that's why I will, if I do stamp an image in black for, um, colored pencils, I will either, especially for a sentiment, I will go with my Simon Says Intense Black. Again, there's, there's different things that, you know, I'll use for certain things only because I know the look that it's going to get me. I hope that made sense. That was a lot of rambling there. So you can see we're still continuing with the other flower here, just filling that in. Um, and adding those colors. Um, so this was very easy, um, to color, you know, if it's something that you want to give it a try, um, this is definitely it. It doesn't have too much detail. It's not overwhelming. You can create many different designs with this. So if you were looking at something to try color pencil, this would be, um, something that is right there not overwhelming, not too detailed, won't make you want to throw it across the room and say, no, I can't do this. Um, it will allow for patience. So here I'm just rechecking the, the placement of my sentiment, um, making sure that I'm not cutting. If I am getting into a little bit of the florals, I don't want to go in too much. Um, here's where I'm going to come in with my Simon Says Intense Black. I do make sure that it's covered and I don't apply full pressure, but I do want that soft black because I am going to come off with the 50 and 30% warm gray. I'm still sticking with them. And then I am actually going to add the rosy beige to the top again, sticking with the colors that I used on the project. Um, but to take a gray and this rosy beige, it gave a very nice effect. It kind of pulled all of those colors 
together. So this is a three layer blend that I'm doing. Again, I did not pull in a blender pen or a white colored pencil. I actually kept the look and used the colored pencils themselves to create those, those blends off of each of them. So again, the 50 is the first, the 30 was the middle, and then the rosy beige on the top. I don't know why I didn't zoom in on this one. Funny me. So sorry. And then here I am, I'm just coming in and I'm going in very lightly. I'm very lightly, I'm, I'm coloring those tops. I want this extremely faint. I don't want it to be as dark as what my florals are, um, but it did give a very, very nice blend and it helps to, to let that stand out just a little bit. I'm going to be pulling in two pieces of cardstock. So this first piece, it looks like it's a red, but it's actually a coral. It's very close to the chestnut color. And I'm going to cut that panel four by five and a quarter. That's going to be my first mat. And then I'm going to pull in a piece of gray cardstock. And that's going to be cut four and a quarter by five and a half. And that'll be the final mat. So I'm going to have uh, two mats sitting behind this image. I will use uh, my double sided tape to attach the foam to the back of this panel. So this panel here is going to go onto the red and I will attach the foam to the back of the red panel. So these two are going to be lifted up off of the, the gray. I'm going to set that down. That is my favorite double-sided tape, but it is extremely unforgiving. I get it actually from Uline. A lot of people ask me about it. It's extremely unforgiving. So here I've grabbed my card base. Um, I have card bases cut four and a quarter by 11, and then I score it at five and a half so that they're ready for me just to score. And then they're ready to either be a landscape or a portrait. So I'm just making sure that is set and in centered onto my standard A2 size card base. I'm going to pull in my iridescent sequins and I'm going to um, place just three of those around. Um, I love the iridescent sequins. They actually, it's, at least to me, they pick up the color of the card and what you're putting them on. Like on my mat there, they're blue, they're green. On my card, they actually go to like a rose color. So I don't know. I think they just tricked me, but I do enjoy it. So I do hope you enjoyed today's project using the Fun Stampers Journey Stamp of the Month for April of 2020. And again, it is called Bold Beautiful, and it has 14 stamps in the set. As always, the products that I used will be listed down below. If you have any questions or comments, please make sure you leave those down below as well. If you haven't already, I'd love for you to subscribe, be a part of my group. Make sure you ring the bell so that you know when the next video is ready for you to watch and make sure you hit the thumbs up. I hope everyone again, and as always, please stay safe, stay healthy, but here's something else that could probably help you to do that. Because for me, as long as we're always being a creative, that means we're staying inside and staying healthy. Take care, everyone.